Hey guys, Adrian here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix this blown out or overexposed sky in uh, Lightroom. And we might use a bit of Photoshop if we need to. Um, so this is, comes in handy if you're doing real estate photography or architectural photography. Often you can't expose uh, everything. The light levels are, are different and the dynamic range of the camera won't capture both the uh, a bright, a really bright sky and also dark areas of the picture. For example, in here, it would be quite dark compared with uh, the sky over here. And as you can see, it's pretty um, it's overexposed, but it's not quite. Um, so one way you can check this is when you click on the slider here, you click on the little arrow here, and you can see these bits, they're pure white. And that normally means they're not recoverable. Depends how much you get. If it's just a little bit, you can recover that. But if it looked like, like that, often you wouldn't be able to recover a lot of that and so that would end up white and if you were looking to fix something like that you really would have need to have shot multiple frames uh, at different exposures so for example I, I've shot another image which is like this to capture the sky and doing that as well serves as having a backup um, so often when I am in these situations I will shoot multiple frames and that way I've, I've always got the information there if I need it. So like I have the sky here if I do need it, um, if I can't pull it back from this. Let's have a look at it. So there's there's a few problems with this image aside from the sky. First of all, this is from the polarizing filter. That So that's because it's uh, you, I've used a wide angle lens. Often you'll get the edges of the filter in if you are uh, completely wide. In this case, I, I used a 17 to 40 uh, Canon uh, L series f4 lens, um, and this would have been shot pretty close to. Well, this was shot at 19 millimeters, so almost as as wide as it goes. In which case, you know, you pick up a little bit of the uh, the filter there. Uh, looks a bit like a vignette, but it's not quite. The first thing, if I was going to fix an image like this, I would apply one of my presets. And so that's a preset I've already made. And so what that includes is remove um, chromatic aberration. So that is often, you may not be able to see it in this image, but um, it's not too bad in this image. It's a little bit actually, if you zoom, if we zoom in, I don't think you guys will be able to see it in this. There's a little bit of green fringing around the edges of the tree. That'll take that, take that away. You know, often it can be a lot worse than that. In this case, it wouldn't really be noticeable. Uh, the other thing is to correct the um, the lens. So Lightroom is pretty smart. Um, it knows what camera you've shot with. It knows the lens. It will automatically um, try and correct these things. So in this case, you can see there's a little bit of uh, barrel distortion. And there's also a little bit of uh, extra vignetting around where it goes a little bit dark here. So some of that, that's corrected some of that just doing that. It's also sort of cropped a little bit out as well, so that's made it a little bit better. Uh, next thing we want to correct is we want to do what we can to fix the um, vertical distortion in this image. So we can do that by coming down here. And in the old days you would have um, used it like this, but we don't have to do that anymore. We can use guided, so we just have to draw a quick line between here and here. And then we'll draw another line sort of over here. So when you use this, it's best to use it to, um, or like on a, on a wall, it's best not to use it on furniture because the wall's normally always straight, not always, but, and it's best to use it towards the outside of the picture. So in this case, that's sort of corrected a lot of that. Um, it might be too much because we might not have enough picture left over here. But let's just have a look. When we crop it down, let's just see what we're left with. And bang. So that's corrected a lot of that. So that's pretty good now. Maybe just a little bit more this way. Okay, so now to fix that sky. So we've pulled the slider. So you want to pull the highlight all the way back. And you can increase the shadows quite a bit. Add a little bit of contrast. I'm going to pull it back even more. I'm going to pull the exposure back. So the cameras, if you've got a fairly new camera, they're pretty good today. I've pulled that back over a stop and crushed the highlights right down. 
um, we've still got a pretty pretty good image not too noisy so we want to add like just a little bit of contrast back with the clarity maybe a little bit of dehaze you can see that sky so you can see the effect I like sometimes I like to slide them all the way just to see what kind of effect we're getting just something like that we'll add back some of the lights that we took out We'll also probably need to add some of these darks back in so that will lighten up some of that. I'm not going to do all of that, I'm going to brush some of this in. So that's looking, it's looking pretty good already. So we haven't really done a lot to that, it's only taken a couple of minutes. Um, so I like to give it a little bit of sharpening and we can just play with the blacks a bit but I don't think they need too much um, playing with in this case because it's quite nice and contrasty. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the brush tool here. I've got a preset um, shadows lighten, I've called it. So I've just increased the shadows slider here and the exposure a little bit and then we're going to brush all that in. And you can adjust the feathering so that's how hard the brush is. So when it's more, more feather like this, it, the inside circle is you know the full effect and the outside circle it's sort of great the, the effect will gradient off um, and so it just slowly feathers feathers off um, so it's not such a hard uh, line um, the flow is how uh, how hard the brush is so are you getting the whole effect in one brush stroke or are you only getting a little bit I normally don't like to use you know the whole effect at once because that way you can just slowly paint in what you want it's better to be able to do it that way um, so we'll just paint in some of this this roof is quite dark so we might do this in a couple of different stages so we'll paint the roof in like that and I'm going to pull that roof right right up like that not too bright we'll pull the highlights back a little bit a little bit of contrast in shallow so that roof is starting to come out. Now I'm going to use a new brush because I want to control that separately. So now we're going to just going to lighten up in here a little bit. Especially in this wall here. It's a bit dark just up here especially. That's starting to look pretty good. We'll just give it a little bit more in here just to even it up a bit more. You don't want to take all the shadow out because you do want to give your image some depth. So we've done that. Now one issue we've got is it's a bit overexposed over here so we're going to zoom in I just press Z to do that I'm just going to hold the alt key and we're going to erase some of that in case we brushed that but we didn't really brush too much of that in this case um, what you can do you can actually click these ones and click the show overlay and you can see where we were brushed so in this case we don't want to we don't want to lighten the wall because the wall is too dark so we'll make the brush a bit smaller and you can do that using the bracket um, the square bracket up and down key so that'll get rid of that we want to take the brushing out of this building here because that's a little bit too it's quite light already so press that again Just see what we've brushed here we've brushed there again so we can undo all that by just uh, doing this, so we'll get rid of all that. It's a little bit up, a little bit up here, so we can just redo some of that. Um, looks like a bit like a dirty mark here, so I'm just going to re-apply the lightning just to that little edge there, just to take some of that away. You can see here where it's not not all red, so we're just going to bring it back up. That should make that look a whole lot better. Okay, the next thing I'd do, I would just darken this building a little bit more. Um, we're going to use the brush again to do that. So this is basically called dodging and burning. So we're just new brush. I'm going to reduce the lights where I've just, just created a preset. I've dropped the exposure down. I've dropped the highlights down. So I'll just get on and do that. And uh, we might um, speed this bit up just so you guys don't have to sit through all of this. Okay, now that's done. What I'm actually going to do, as you can see in here, it's a little bit green looking, so that's reflection from the grass. 
So we're just going to take that cast off and it's a bit green through here too. So we, we can just easily do that by just turn that off. Just reducing the saturations just a little bit. We don't want to take it all out. And we'll also we'll do another brush just for this. Saturation, we'll just decrease it here. Let's just have a look at the original. So that's what we were and that's what we've left with. So as you can see, it's come up pretty well. And that, there you go guys, that's all there is to it. So that's how you can recover your sky and also fix up some of the vertical distortion in your uh, real estate and architecture photos. Don't forget to subscribe to their channel and uh, give it a thumbs up if you like this video. See you next time.